I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is June 10th, 2018, and this is a Manipulative Monday. Okay, this video is going to be a follow-up onto a video we did recently talking about a Manipulative Monday where we actually made these tiles, and we made these tiles in OpenSCAD. And then I had a comment here from David March on YouTube that basically said, look at the hill, well, sorry, hull command. If you do a hull of the four corner cylinders, you get a rounded cube without the need to create the cube to fill the in-between cylinders. Uh, so that's really cool and it worked. So I'm going to go over that in this video. But first, just for those of you who may not uh, know what OpenSCAD is, I want to do a quick review of OpenSCAD. Uh, if you go to OpenSCAD.org, uh, you can go and download OpenSCAD. It's a tool that allows you to do 3D objects as code. And so you can tell it to draw a sphere here, a square here. And you can do some interesting things like join them, uh, subtract them from each other. You can get some really complex shapes out of the code. And then you can make STL files, and then you have your object you can print out. And it's interesting to see that I'm coming to find out that people, a lot of people are using this. Uh, all, For example, I have the Prusa 3D printer, and all the 3D printed parts on it are actually done in OpenSCAD. You can go download the OpenSCAD files, and that's how they create them and maintain them and iterate through them. Um, but with that, let me show you really quickly. I'll go open up a new OpenSCAD window in here. And so in OpenSCAD, you can just write code. So I can say sphere with a radius of two and boom, it will draw a little sphere. Oh, looks like I had the, there's a uh, not facet number, fragment number. Let me make that a little bigger. It tells you how detailed to make it. And so I can draw a sphere or I can draw a cube. You can draw all little things as code and you can set variables in here. So I could say, radius equals two times four as an example uh, and then come down here and use the variable so there's all kinds of cool things uh, you can do modules functions it's really really useful um, and so i like it a lot so far i think it's going to be a really good we're using it as a very good learning tool in our um we homeschool and reason is a very good learning tool for homeschooling to teach geometry as well as 3d printing okay so with that um Let's go into OpenSCAD and show what I'm talking about, uh, what Mark, well, did I just say his name right? What David March was talking about to use this hull command. Okay, so if you happen to go to the, if you go to the OpenSCAD cheat sheet, slash cheat sheet, you can see all these functions in here and different things, they, things that they have. And one thing, if you look for it, is they have transformations and there's this hull command. And so you can open that up, which goes to here and they can explain this hull command a little bit better. But one interesting thing to note, um, and I'm a, a bit of a math nerd, but not a super math nerd, OpenSCAD is for geometric math nerds. So there's no function in there that says, make a square with rounded corners. There's nothing like that. There's no odd, convenient tools for doing that. They don't make, here's this little odd tool that does this, this little odd tool that does this. All of it is math nerd stuff. So there's all kinds of really cool, detailed math nerd and geometric nerd stuff to really if you know far beyond what I know, I know a lot of trig, a lot of geometry, so I feel comfortable, but there's some stuff like a hole that I've never dealt with. And so if you actually want to get more details on that, here's a Wikipedia page on convex hulls, and they talk about all the mathematical principles of a convex hull. And so there's no function that says round these corners or join these. Well, there's a join, a mathematical join. But there's this convex hull, which is a mathematical concept. And so this is really cool for homeschooling or for teaching in general. Because if you want to teach these math concepts, you can have them create them in OpenSCAD and visualize them. Um, and so you can go over, uh, you can go over in detail and figure out what all this hull actually means mathematically. I'm not going to do that in this video, but it's interesting to know that you could. So there aren't, there aren't. The point being, there aren't these convenient functions, but there are these math nerd functions that do things that are cool. And one of them is the hull. And so first, I'll show you. The problem that uh, I had, not much of a problem, it was easy to solve, but it could have been solved easier with the hull function, uh, with the hull transformation that David March mentioned. So I'll bring my code in here from last time where I was making a tile, and you can see the tile right there. And so what we did, the cool thing about doing this in, this, in here versus using it in Tinkercad is that I have my choice of fonts. So I can use all my local fonts and I got more choices of my numbers and letters to make these little tiles for, you know, mathematical purposes while we're teaching math and you have things to hold and, and different things. So what this does 
is I'll, I'll go through right here and I'll, I'll remove some of this stuff. So I'm going to remove this writing portion at the end, which is the letter on top. And that should, hopefully, if I render it, it should remove the eight, he says, hopefully. There we go. So now what I'm talking about and Mark and um, yeah, David March was talking about is see, I want to get this little platter with rounded corners. So what I did to accomplish that, and let me slowly remove all these different things to show what I did. My idea is there's no rounded corners. So what I could do is I could make little tiny cylinders, four tiny little cylinders, and then fill in the difference with two cubes, two flat little cubes. So that was not the guy I want. Okay, that's a cylinder. And that's a cylinder. That's a cylinder. There we go. Okay, so cylinder one, two, three, four. Oh, I went the, I went the wrong way. There we go. Here to this one. So what I did was that. So I drew four little cylinders. I, you know, the defender four little cylinders. I told him to be put in the different places based on where I want this house, what size to be. And then what I did is I simply made two cubes. Two little flat cubes. One that goes right here. And so it actually goes into half of the circles right here. So there's that little guy. And then I made another one to cover the other one and they happen to hit right on the tangent. And then I get the result I want. And if I, just to show you what I did, a little bit more detailed, so I can go remove all the cubes, all the cylinders, sorry. Uh, where are you? I can remove all the cylinders and you can see I have these two things making like a really big fat, you know, red cross kind of symbol, just really fat one. Um, and so that, that gets the result I want. However, there's an easier way to do it. And you can actually do a lot of other really cool things with this whole command. So let me remove that and bring back the cylinders. So what you would do in this case is you would draw the cylinders like that as it comes. Yeah, okay, there's the cylinders. And what I can do is I can use this hull command. So I can start, just like I can translate and close things, I'll put the hull command here. And I'll go to the bottom of my cylinders and I'll enclose it. So everything in there is gonna be part of this hull command, hull trans, transformation. And I get the result. I get that exact same result that I wanted. Just much more conveniently, much more mathematically done, much easier to do. And the interesting thing, this does all kinds of other cool things. So let's say, for example, this little last guy. So I will comment out real quick so you can see this. This is, this is just cool, the thing it can do. And it's all just math nerd stuff. So I can go down here and let me take my, let me get my cylinders again. And let's say for some weird reason, I wanted one of my cylinders to be taller. So there's my platter height. I'll multiply it by two. So one of these will just be taller. Well, let me make it a little more extreme. Four. So you can really see it. So there you go. So you see that one is way taller. And now what if I wanted to join these in some strange way so it slopes up and they're all enclosed within each other? You can do that with this whole command. It does, it just, it's awesome. So now if I run it, look. It does this little, it slopes up, it wraps around, it goes up, and it makes this really cool looking shape. And it's all math nerd stuff. It's all geometric math nerd stuff. So doing the whole for my purposes is a little cleaner way of doing it. Say a little bit of code. It seems to render faster, um, but also presents the possibilities of just doing cool stuff like this. Or like, let me go do another little nerd thing. Let me see. Let me, let me raise one of the other ones up too four times which will give you some little funky wedge that's just cool i am so glad that he pointed that out it's just it's it's just awesome um so now let me go back 
and do what I intended to do. And so now I don't need these. I can remove these. I don't need these at all. And then let me bring back uh, my writing, my, my text, and I should get the result I want. Dun -dun. There's an eight. Okay. And so what I'm going to do, so now I'm going to take this, convert it to an STL file, and I'll put up my desktop now, and I'll call it number plate underscore eight, and save it. And then let me bring up Prusa control. And I'm going to put it in there, and I'm going to. Uh, do, slice it up and print it out just to show that it's all working like it like the other one was so there's my number eight I'm gonna do two millimeter height and I don't need much of an infill for these guys I'll do 10% generate it and then with this one just like I did last time I'll go up the height until we get to the point where the number font starts printing right there and I'll put in a, a swap point there because I'll make the bottom one color and the letter a number color so you can really see it highlighted. And and that, that's one way with the, with the Prusa without the multicolored. I can do multicolored based on layer. So I can swap out at any layer with a different color and have it continue, which is really cool. So let me save the G code. And again, I'll put this on the date desktop number plate. And I'll say underscore eight. There we go. And let's go print it out. Okay, so I've got it printed out. Dun, dun, dun. And last time I printed these out, I printed this out with yellow and black, which I liked. But I kind of like this white and black. I, I like the look. My, uh, my wife, Lisa, liked it a lot better, too. She's like, oh, I like that one. Um, but now for the numbers. So this took 28 minutes to print. It used 0 0.004 cents worth of electricity, and I based it on 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And it weighs, it's kind of hard to weigh because it's so small, but doing a few little manipulations, I think it weighs 0 0.002 kilograms, very tiny. And based on $20 per kilogram, $20 for a one kilogram roll, that comes out to four cents for just the filament. And electricity in this case is just so small, you don't even count it. So overall, this is four cents to print. Um, but I may be off on my weight calculation because my scale is not quite that sensitive. So maybe I'm off by a factor of two, uh, in which case maybe it's eight cents to print. Not sure. Really? But anyway, still dirt cheap. Um, but anyway, uh, there's the whole command. I found it really useful to get this done. Very seemed like the right way to go. I can see me using it in all kinds of other cases to do really cool objects. Um, it's all probably interesting to even learn the math behind how the whole command works and, and all the mathematical coolness of that. So I'm very happy. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm also very happy of people posting comments like that, that can, I can kind of research and direct my thinking and where I'm going. So that's just useful. Everyone trying to, you know, helping each other out. And that was really cool. Um, but anyway, there's the whole command. Hope someone found this video useful. I know I did. It was a lot of fun doing this. So cool beans. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we are doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.